Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Yeti's Parole Officer. Um, back by popular demand, I seem like uh, some people on the channel really enjoyed it when I played these uh, choice-based, uh, text-based reading games. Um, I enjoyed Choice of Rebels a good bit. I enjoyed reading through it and playing it. It is a lot of reading, but that's all right. Maybe I, I wish I could find maybe a reading robot. Or something. or something for these it's early in the morning so that makes it hard to read as well but you guys seem to really enjoy it drew some more people to the channel so I figured maybe I'll try another one this one came out yesterday um, as of when I'm recording it and this is Friday morning so the video will go up Monday so good Monday morning to you or Monday probably afternoon because this will come up in the e a the afternoon slot um, but without further ado let's uh, let's uh, get into it um, I want I want to change it to the dark thing use a black background Okay, that's going to be a little bit easier on my eyes. I'm pretty. I'm actually pretty pleased with that. Okay. Here we go. My name's Keith. This is Yeti's Parole Officer. A crunch echoes in the darkness. You freeze in the lane. The moon is full, but the night is overcast, so you strain to see in the darkness. A small clump of bushes lines the road just ahead of you, and in the distance, a cluster of factories emits a dim reddish glow. No bell, so it can't be a carriage approaching. The new locomotives haven't reached your little village yet. It's only 1832. Besides, this doesn't sound like chugging machinery, but a rasping scrape over gravel. Movement in one of the bushes. The clouds part. A shaft of moonlight glints off something shining among the, among the leaves and brambles. It's nighttime. You're alone. You've heard tales of a beast stalking the countryside. The fin lion. A ghost. A monster. A hoax. Depending on who you ask. It'd make an awfully good story if you saw it. Besides, it could be someone in trouble. Or maybe you're just curious, plain and simple. So what do we want to do? Find a safe hiding spot and watch for a bit. Call out to whoever's there. They might need help. I get a stick and start poking the bushes. I sneak as close as I can. Hmm. I think if it were me... I don't know if I'd... I feel like I'd probably just stand in the road and wait. Um, maybe not put the bushes. Let's sneak as close as we can. How about that? You're pretty stealthy. You wait until the breeze shifts and carries your scent downwind. Then you creep forward. Your boots don't make a sound on the gravel road. You take it one step at a time, pausing every so often to listen with bated breath. You're almost there. Is it close enough? I'll throw, I throw a rock. Maybe, maybe I can flush a thing out of hiding. I try and get even closer. Let's throw a rock. I like throwing rocks. Your fingers curl around a smooth, palm-sized stone. You toss it into the bushes. Not very hard, mind you. Just enough to scare whatever's hiding there. You'd rather have it out in the open where you can see it. The bushes shake, and a, and a lithe, wraith-like shape emerges. It is the fin lion. In the gloom, it looks like a silvery lion. Its ragged mane seems to capture the starlight. It bears its teeth. Goodness, it has very large teeth. You take a step backwards, not taking your eyes off the fin lion. Its jaws open and its red eyes fix on yours. It occurs to you that you might be eaten here on this lonely road, and no one will ever know what happened to you. The fin lion advances another step, but stops abruptly as a loud humming fills the air. You glance up. One of the stars overhead seems to be getting bigger and brighter, almost like it's falling to earth. The star grows so blindingly bright you have to close your eyes. When you open them, an object like nothing you've ever seen is sitting on the road. It looks rather like an enormous coach, although made of silver metal and lacking horses. Lights glow in the bands along its top and sides. A doorway opens, and three creatures step into the night. Hmm. My only option is... Oh my... They remind you of pictures you've seen of the Egyptian god Thoth. Slim, feathered beings, just taller than you, with bird-like heads and hands that end in curving talons. They stand lightly on two feet. Well, well, one says. And you're shocked that you can understand it. We found you, Bob. The fin lion snarls as another creature shakes his head. Thought you could bend the rules of your exile, did you? The bird creature asks. You stare from the fin lion to the bird creatures. The bird creatures sound like constables, and they're treating the fin lion like a criminal. 
I jump in and introduce myself. I distract the creature so the fin line can escape. Ooh. That sounds scary. I get a better look at the horseless silver coach. Hmm. Hmm. Let's get a better look. When the monsters all distracted by each other, with the monsters all distracted by each other, you edge closer to the strange silver machine. After a moment's hesitation, you dare to run your hands along the outside. It's warm and smooth, and it sends a tingle along your fingers and up your arms. A scuffle breaks out behind you. One of the bird creatures whips out something like a pistol and aims it at the fin line. There's a burst of light, and the fin line collapses. Stunned, the bird creature says. Let's take him back to HQ. Then it freezes. There's a human in our ship. And it doesn't look scared, another says. I'm not, you say. The first bird creature looks thoughtful. Then I think Sub-Commissioner Tweel will want to talk to you. One creature remains behind to handle the fin lion, but the rest bundle you into their horseless carriage. You wish you had about ten more eyes so you could look everywhere at once. The inside walls are smooth and white like an egg. Blinking, multicolored lights cover panels throughout. They sit you down on a too-tall seat and strap you in. Careful, you say. The clasp is caught on my... What? My skirts, I'm a lady. My suspenders, I'm a man. I'm a man, but it's caught on my handbag. I'm a lady, but it's caught on my trouser hem. Let's do... I think this is telling you, do you want to be a, a straight man or woman or a gay man or woman? I'm going to be a straight man. That's just how I play these games. I play them like I, I play, play them like I am. No hard feelings either way. My suspenders, I'm a man. The ship rumbles and lifts off the ground. You, your stomach clenches. Where are we going, you cry. Not far. The sub-commissioner was doing her rounds anyway. She's in orbit. That doesn't make sense to you, but there's no time to ponder. The ship jolts forward. You twist around to look out the window. There are stars. You're in the sky. Suddenly, you feel both very small and very free. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry for that disgusting noise. Mm. Got some sinus stuff going on. Making reading a little tough. A massive silvery wall fills your field of vision. The bird creatures unstrap you and lead you out of their carriage into a maze of winding, windowless corridors studded with doors. You realize their carriage has connected to some sort of sky-faring ship. At one door, they pause. Subcommissioner, one calls. We've got a potential recruit. Come in. The door opens. You gasp. Seems a little bit easy to get abducted by aliens there. It's just kind of like, okay, hey, there you go. Uh... Oh, you're one single human around? Well, you do seem like you'd be a good recruit. Another bird creature stands behind a desk. She has the same thin beak as the others. Her slender arms end in clawed heads. Good, I'm so sorry. The long pinkish feathers on her curving neck smooth out around her shoulders. Her yellow eyes fix on you. New recruit, hmm? Sit down. There's one chair. You sink onto it. The other bird creatures melt from the room. What's your name, human? Hmm... Let's be Jim. Jim sounds good. Brandon would be a good choice because my friend Brandon, my one of my best buddies, my probably my best buddy, my partner in crime on the YouTube circuit, uh, could name it after him. But it doesn't sound like an 1800s name, so we're going to name him Jim. Short for James. I'm Jim, you say, and I'm, I'm Sub-Commissioner Tweel of the Pan-Galactic Prisons Bureau. She meets your blank stare with a sigh. My team didn't tell you much, did they? You shake your head. Earth is not the only planet with life. There are many sentient species throughout the galaxy. My own people, the Tetu, keep peace among them. Sometimes individuals commit crimes. They do on Earth, too, you say. They go to jail. Tweel's eyes glitter. Or, or to penal colonies. Isn't that right? Thinking of, thinking of Australia, you nod. Oh, no, that last part was not Australian, sorry. Earth is one of our penal colonies. We place convicts in exile here. The, those monsters aren't supernatural beings, they're criminals. Tweel taps her talons together. Every so often, we recruit a human to help us, someone to liaise between the PGPB and Earth, and ensure that our exile program is kept secret from humanity. I'm making you that offer. Otherwise, her eyes narrow. We'll give you a memory wipe. You think, can I see my family again? No, humans have pathetically short lives. We'll inject you with nanobots to keep you young. Most of our convicts have sentences lasting several of your centuries. Once you're in, the Pan-Galactic Prisons Bureau will be your life. Tweel tilts her head up to one side. Is there someone you will miss? You do have a sweetheart. What was her name again? Sarah the Milkmaid, a hard-working girl. Hmm. Do I want to... Again, I'm going to play it straight. 
So it's either Sarah the milkmaid, a hardworking girl, or Lady Serena, a witty lass. Hmm. I feel like Lady Serena might be able to take it if I'm not there. So we'll do Lady Serena, a witty lass. So Serena is my my sweetheart. A fair maid indeed, always keeping you on your toes. There is someone, you murmur, Twill shrugs. It's a hard life, Jim. We don't have many humans in the PGPP, and romantic relationships between agents are frowned upon, but you'll, have, you'll travel to other planets, see things like you've never seen, and live a long, long life. That certainly sounds appealing. What was your occupation prior to this? Hmm. A valet, amateur, fossil hunter, a politician. Nah, dog, I'm not a politician. I don't know what a valet would be like in the 1800s. Um, I don't know. This is hard. Let's do soldier. That might explain why we weren't afraid when we walked up. Well, Twill says, it'll be quite an initiation. Are you interested in joining us? I am, you say carefully. Why, specifically? Uh... You've got big guns and I want one. I want to see new things. Protecting my planet. I need a new job. Protecting my planet is the right thing, right thing to do. You aliens fascinate me. I want to build ties with you. It seems like a big job. I want to prove I can do it. Hmm. I think the other one that... This is the only one that strikes my fancy is protecting my planet. The rest of these seem kind of cheesy. It seems a little bit... A little bit strange that I'm already signed up for this. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, this definitely already. So, I'm not trashing the, trashing the story. I'm just saying, I understand that you probably have to do things quickly in a game like this. You can't build for hours and hours before you even make a single decision. But this one seems, seems to make the most sense to me. Protecting my planet is the right thing to do. Twill nods thoughtfully. Fair enough. Before your medical appointment, we'll need to enroll you in the Academy for Training. She passes a small screen to you. A strange alien language fills it. Twill sighs and taps the screen once. The symbols rearrange themselves and you realize it's a list of courses. You'll have a specialty, of course, Twill says. Which course speaks to you most? Diplomatic negotiations, divine art of persuasion, munitions, I can blow things up, disguise, I like being stealthy, observation, I have an eye for small details, focus and resolve, I'm proud of my willpower. Hmm. Let's see. What do we want to do? Oh, man. That really hit the spot. Finally cool enough to drink. Oh, boy. Um, let's do disguise. I, I'm, I'm kind of... My first thought is do something that would be action-y for the video and stuff, but... I don't know, this seems like something that I wouldn't normally choose. So let's try disguise and, and being stealthy. Very well, Twill says. I'll give you a moment on the observation deck to bid your planet farewell. Then you'll need to report to Med Deck 3 for nanobot treatment and translator implant. Earth looks so small, hanging against the darkness of space. A thrill of excitement runs through you. This is going to be a great adventure. Awesome. And time goes by. You do well in the academy. Within a few years, you've made junior sub-liaising sub agent by the 21st century. That feels strange to say. You are a full-fledged liaising agent, agent, keeping the convicts on Earth from getting too unruly and making sure the people of Earth remain blissfully oblivious. Overall, things are going well. The nanobots have kept your body as young as it is. And the day you met Tweel, the translator ship feel as young as it was the day you met Tweel. The translator ship feels natural under your skin. Even the communications have improved since you started. You used you're used to the job. People in the PGPB know your name after a few decades. But then, one day, the Yeti asks for a meeting to discuss his parole. Alright. The PGPB has a base deep in the Himalayas. You've visited a few times over the years. It's a good spot for parole meetings. And you stride into the room confidently, not even blinking in the bright light. A single, long table sits directly in front of you. A few meters further on, the air shimmers innocently. You swallow. It's a field of nanobots, held in place for now but ready to sting anyone who blunders into them. No wonder the Yeti is sitting so quietly on the other side. Oh. His long white fur has been neatly combed and his claws polished. Commissioner Twill nods at you as you take your seat. About time, she says. He turns forward and gives the Yeti a withering glare. Now, Prisoner 24601, otherwise known as Yeti, your plea. Commissioner Twill, the Yeti begins. 
liaising agent Jim. It's very kind of you to hear me today. This really is kind of an interesting concept. Get on with it, Yeti. He flinches at Tweel's tone. I've been exiled to this planet for 181 years. That's nearly half of a light, a half a light t lifetime for a hersus like me. I've learned my lesson. I'm ready for parole. Tweel glances at you. Your mind rates us. You need to say something. If that's true, why do we keep hearing reports that you've been cited? It has been a long exile. Why don't you tell us how you've changed? You were sent to this penal colony for a reason. How can we trust you? Don't you eat people? Hmm. I think this is a good question. Don't you eat people? Yeah, let's ask him that. The Yeti smile is revealing rows of sharp, jagged teeth. Just a couple, and it was right after I got here. People climbing around with bulky coats and heavy packs. I didn't even know they were humans then. I could have sworn they were some big, ugly animal. He leans back in his chair, looking thoughtful. Actually, I thought maybe they were manatees. You snort manatees? Manatees, humanity, it's an honest mistake. I just knew manatees were big, mountaineers are big. He spread his paws wide. Can you blame me? Yes. When was the last time I ate a mountaineer? At Twill's gesture, you check your notes. 1912. See? Over a century with a spotless record. The Yeti pauses. A familiar deviousness flickers across his face. Besides, he says slowly, I have information that might interest you. Twill's beat clacks as she draws her talons over a screen inlaid on her desk. Text rolls down the display. After long years with the PGPB, you read alien scripts easily. The Yeti has amassed quite a profile, with several psychological tests and a list of misdemeanors longer than your forearm. Let's have it, Yeti, Twill says. The Yeti picks at his fur. His pink tongue skitters over the, his rows of teeth. When he laughs, it rings all too false to your ears. Why don't you grant me parole first? That's probably not how this works, boy. Twill clicks her talons on the desk, unblinking. Perhaps you misunderstand. That is not our procedure. I promise the Yeti's voice rises. It's good stuff. You give the Yeti a hard look. He does have a history of lying. But I really have valuable information. Suddenly the Yeti's voice quaver quavers. His shoulders hunch. He looks almost scared. It's dangerous for me to even mention it. It's important. Trust me. We can't. Twill pulls up another screen. Parole denied. Stop, the Yeti, please. Please, Agent Jim, give me a chance. Let him speak. The desperation in the Yeti's face stirs something deep within you, and you feel yourself softening. Giving Twill a pleading look of your own, you nod to him. All right, Yeti, what is it? Promise, you, promise you'll let me go home first. I promise that. I can't promise that. Worth a try, the Yeti sighs. It's coming on June 31st. That's not a date. Hmm. It's not a date, but you'll humor him. What is, what is, you ask? I can't tell you that. It might be your imagination, but you think you can, you think you catch the tiniest of grins from him. It's coming on June 31st. I've heard enough, Twill interrupts. Turning to you, Twill adds, what do you think? Should he get parole? Um. Hmm. I want to question him further. Har he's not harmless. Don't, and I don't trust him yet. Um, and let's question him. Yeti, you say softly, why are you scared? So scared. The Yeti's head snaps up, so does Twill. Scared, the Yeti says. Look at you, you're trembling, you lean over the desk. Either this is big news, or you're scared of being caught in another lie. Suddenly, the Yeti won't meet your eye. You smile knowingly. Who's your source, Yeti? I can't tell you, he mumbles. Right, and when did you come across this information? I can't tell you. When, what, is it, what does it pertain to? If Hersus had sweat glands, he'd be dripping. Instead, his tongue would look... Instead, his tongue lolls like a dog's. I can't tell you. What can't you tell me? It's coming on June 31st. What? June 31st, you repeat. That isn't a real date. Twill scowls. Stop wasting our time, Yeti. Turning to you, Twill adds, What do you think? Should he get parole? Hmm. I guess let's schedule another hearing soon. I want to watch him more. Alright, folks. We're going to schedule another hearing soon. We're, we want to watch him more. Um, in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Another video will be coming out tomorrow. I hope that you have enjoyed watching. I've enjoyed it so far, being the Yeti's Parole Officer, and we will keep going. Um, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends if you like, and I will see you in the next one. I love you very much. Bye-bye.